Howdy folks, I'd love to draw your attention to this fun little animation where you'll see that multiple containers are being filled with these circles, okay? And what's especially cool about this is that if I change the size of my preview area here, you'll see that it's fully responsive. These containers change their width and height and size, but the circles always fill them completely, okay? Now, if we take just a quick look in my HTML, let me just click here so we're not terribly distracted you'll see that we have cards that have circles in them okay and the cards have some different responsive width and height settings but when I click here you'll see that we can continue the animation of each circle filling its card all right and again fully responsive now the trick to this lies in my CSS here where you'll see that I'm using for the circle these width and height dimensions of 142 CQ max units, all right? That stands for container query max units. You may be saying, well, what's so special about this magic 142 number? Well, you may recall this lesson I shared where on scroll we are filling the entire viewport with a circle and then more content comes up, okay? And now this is set to work whether it's a wide window a narrow window you'll see now it's a big tall rectangle it still gets filled completely with that circle before the new content comes in okay and that's gonna work for any aspect ratio including a small little area like this okay perfect so if you need a refresher on how that all worked I have this free lesson here that contains a complete video explaining why 142 VMAX units is the secret sauce to this sort of effect, okay? So now that we have container queries, we can use that same 142 container query max, which is similar to the VMAX. Now in my JavaScript here, I wanna point out that all the animation happens in my tween here of the elements with a class of circle. And we are just scaling them from a scale of zero. That's all this animation is, okay? We're targeting every circle inside of every card and scaling them up at the same time. All the change color stuff happens on complete in this change colors function, all right? It's important to note that I'm starting out by selecting a random hue. Once the circles grow, change colors is going to be run and they're going to set each card, meaning the rectangles here to have a background color using the latest hue value. I'm then going to update the hue by incrementing it just a little bit, subtracting 160 degrees and forcing that into a range of 360 using the modulo operator here. Once that is done, I'm going to set my circle to have the new hue value, and then I'm going to animate things again. So what I get is this sort of just recursive animation happening, where once it's finished, it's sort of swapping colors, updating them, and rescaling that same circle. And again, since I am using container query values for the width and height, I can scale those containers all the way up and I don't have to change anything in my animation code at all, all right? It is all fully and totally responsive. And when I'm recording videos like this, I really love the fact that I can just boom, click to pause the animation. You'll notice that my tween is just sitting inside this function. There's no reference to it, but what I'm doing is tapping into GSAP's global timeline and I'm toggling its paused state. So I can just click again and we can watch these wonderful colors come in with these circles, all right? So I thought this was a lot of fun and I just wanted to share this little trick with you. And as always, if you like this video, please share it, leave a comment, all that cool social media stuff. And if you wanna learn more about GSAP, check out creativecodingclub.com. I've got over 250 lessons going through everything from the basics to scroll-driven animation, SVG animation, and so much more. Each week my students get a new lesson, and I guarantee you it's the best way to learn GSAP. Thanks for watching.